What is Africa? Is it the wildlife, the beautiful coasts, thriving cities? It is more than that. It is the people. Our 55 countries have many things in common. Our cultures bind us together. They give us strength and identity. They make us proud. By sharing our knowledge and working together, we're building a new Africa that's driven by investments, by game-changing infrastructure projects, and using transformative technology to change the way we live, work, and conduct business. Using our largest natural resource, our vast arable land, we are making advances in agriculture, developing new industries, creating jobs and improving livelihoods. Together, we are moving forward on economic integration. By consolidating Africa's significant internal market to foster trade within the continent and with the world, Africa is open for business. We are building the Africa we want. So, what is the continent of the future? The answer is Africa. This is not business as usual. No regular day of the week. There'll be no fighting the snooze button and getting ready for work. This will be something else. A country closed for travel and so closed for business. But just you wait until we can travel again. Boy, are we going to travel. Long breaks and short getaways to B&Bs, lodges and hotels, girls trips and getaways na Majid. Pella, we'll be reintroducing ourselves to South Africa again. To our beautiful people and places. We'll be traveling to go see my lady Akai. Stopping here and there along the way. We'll be exploring like never before because we'll know what it's like not to be able to. There's no way we won't go. Imagine what's happening visiting a farm called Helixpan. Korean deep in a kankasi, but she's a nyama koso. We'll do it all. We'll invest in our country right from our own pockets, making bookings here and reservations there, and getting people back to work again. But for now, as Plomeranga, stay home, stay safe, knowing that Saji Gamanj, that it'll Ghana is a beautiful country. There is so much of it you probably haven't seen, haven't experienced, haven't touched, haven't felt, haven't eaten. When this is all over, let's discover our land again with new eyes. Let's feel each other again. We are one people brought together by destiny. Let's make that count. Let's show love for each other and our environment. Let's tell our stories. And let's watch and listen to our stories. There will be so much to tell. Ghana is a truly beautiful country. Be Ghana. Stay in Ghana. Experience Ghana. Make Ghana great. And we will invite the world to come and experience Ghana too. But for now, stay home. Brought to you by the National Film Authority. Do then yes, I'm here for another two weeks. Or and if they don't, 
then I go back on Monday. So at the moment, I have no idea. Does that mean we could be spending the next two weeks prospecting time? Was it good enough? Should be. I don't make a main office. Anyway, I don't make a main office. Yeah, that's true. Try to remember you bring it in. Let's sit this out of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you can take it out. Uh, you, your slot is. Wait, is this microphone? Now we live. Okay, cool. Good morning, Sunny Bonani, Dumelang, Dumaturani, and welcome to the Small Business Summit. I'm greeting you all the way from South Africa during what we call a level three lockdown, and I hope you are safe wherever in the world you may be. So my name is Petunia Devalo, and it is an honor and gives me great pleasure for me to then be here to introduce to you the 2021 Small Business Summit. This is a professional services edition. It is a Digitize South Africa initiative brought to you by Half-Link Africa in collaboration with Digital Foundation Africa. So, a little bit about myself. I'm the Business Development Director of Half-Link Africa, and we are the leading small business management software um, system company that is powered by the VC2 technology. We came together in collaboration with one thing in mind, and that was to accelerate the digitization evolution with small businesses in the lead. So let's get into the crux of why are we here today. As you are all too aware, we are in the midst of a crisis like no other. That is the global pandemic of COVID-19. This COVID-19, along with the lockdown regulations that we have all been going through, has killed so many small businesses, and it's in the process of eradicating so many others. So we have come in together and realized that for businesses to stay alive and to thrive in this climate, digitization is a need right now and not a thing for later. So we took it upon ourselves to put together an exceptional panelist who are coming to come here and discuss a few topics that will address this accentuated economic crisis that we have in this country. So these are the topics that we're going to be looking at. Financial inclusion, especially for professional service SMEs. Number two, establishing and maintaining functional business practices. Number three, retaining customers and generating leads. And lastly, but not least, the what next. So without any further ado, we're going to go right straight into the panel discussion and to our host, Peter. And uh, we have the Chief Vision Officer of the uh, Digital Foundation Africa, who is joining us all the way from Ghana. His name is Foster Coffee Sam. He is also the founding partner of um, Africa Digital Festival and Digital Foundation Africa, which basically is an organization spanning over 50 different countries. And without preempting a lot of who Foster is, I'm going to invite him to the stage right now. Uh, just so he can give a brief introduction of this whole summit and the status of small businesses 
in terms of digital. Foster, how are you doing? Yeah, Kula, thank you very much. I'm doing well. Um, thank you for putting together this event and um, thank you for the speakers as well, Beku and Jacqueline and, and the rest of the people who are supposed to be part of this event. And uh, so um, the purpose of the Small Business Summit is basically to introduce um, digital tools as well as make um, small business owners understand the reason why they have to go digital. And so um, the Digital Foundation in Africa through uh, events, which is the Africa Digital Festival, started to put together this, um, this, this small business summit, even though it was supposed to be um, a physical event, but unfortunately, coronavirus and the lockdown in South Africa decided to make us go digital as, as our event says. And so the purpose of these events is basically to help businesses and um, business owners understand and know what kind of tools they have to use while they are online to maximize profits. And so uh, I, I'll urge everybody who's connecting via online, whether YouTube, Facebook, uh, and at the same time here to pay really attention to the speakers and what they are gonna say, so that by the time they finish, they know what exactly and how best they, they can leverage on digital tools and other digital processes to um, achieve as well as maximize their profit. And so thank you very much, Kuda. And um, this is the first edition, and I'm sure this is more of, uh, this, is, this is going to be uh, part of the series that we're going to put together for Digitize Africa, uh, which the, the whole plan is to um, explore ecosystem across some African countries. And so um, South Africa being part of it, let's start with a small business summit. And thank you very much, Kuda, please take over. All right. So we are back now. Uh, I'll be back now. So thank you, Foster, for for that. Um, as you can see, we've got two other people on board, and we have our live guests. We have um, Jacqueline Wenzel, who's joining us from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Jacqueline. Sorry. Hi there. How are you doing? Thank I'm you. well, thank you. Just a little hot. <laughs> oh, is it hot in Cape Town? <laughs> <laughs> like Shots. 45 degrees or something stupid today. So. Oh my gosh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's raining in South in, in Johannesburg. And, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, Abegu um, Mensa all the way from Ghana. How are you, baby? Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Thank you for joining me. Uh, and then, um, just to give you a brief background, um, we also have um, our, our own technical partners uh, from VCTA. And um, pretty much, they, uh, we, we've worked together with Africa Digital First and Digital Foundation to come up with this. But we have the Chief Marketing Officer of uh, VCTA. Uh, how are you doing? I'm very good and I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you. And then next to Adi, you can see the handsome fellow who is taking my shine now. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have uh, Lesiba uh, Chela from um, the South Africa Freelancers Association. How are you? I'm, I'm doing very well, thanks. And um, it's, it's an honor to be here. I feel honored and thankful to be able to present this affair today. Thank you. So without further ado, we are going to jump. Kuda, you have frozen, so we can't see you.
I believe Kuda is having some um, internet issues. So um, as, as soon as they, he comes back, uh, they will take over. So Kuda, if you can hear me, if you are back. Uh, Jacqueline looks like we we've lost the entire South African team. Yeah, it looks like it. Hey? Probably having some very serious technical challenges over there. I can yeah, see I think, even. I think, yeah, I think so. I think they are having problems with their internet, but uh, yeah. yeah. So I'll definitely take it over. Then um, when they come, they will they will they will, they will push it. Sure. Uh, Jacqueline, if you don't, if you don't mind, I think you can, you can just take over and have your, have your talk, and from there, by the time that you finish, they, they will be on, on board. Sure, no problem. Um, hi everybody. Um, I am Jacqueline Wenzel. I am the chair lady for the South African chapter of the Spa and Wellness Association in Africa. I'm based in Cape Town in, um, in South Africa, and. Um, I think the reason why I am um, on, on this panel this morning is because um, our industry is made up of mostly small businesses. Um, throughout Africa, we've seen small businesses um, over the last um, few years take a strain. Um, so one of the questions that was um, asked to me was, um, you know, um, how technology is going to work um, in our businesses, you know, our spa and wellness industry is a touch industry. We are experts in touch. We understand um, wellness, um, which is usually um, digital detoxing. And now the world, and because of this pandemic, the world has changed so much that we've had to rely on technology to be able to communicate with our clients and, um, and sort of keep ourselves in the eye of the client. And it's been a challenge. Um, you know, our industry is, um, it's been a very difficult transition for us because our industry, we are experts in touch. We understand one-on-one -on -one communication with our clients. Um, we deal with consulting with them, you know, um, very much in a hands-on way. And um, all of a sudden we're being told to Zoom and Skype and um, whatever other technologies they are on board. And we're not experts in that. Um, so it has been a challenge for our industry to transition to being more digital. Um, and I think the other thing that our um, industry has suffered with is who to trust. You know, we're um, experts in one field and um, that there's so many people out there that's actually come on board as technology experts. And so who do we trust? As a small business, um, we are um, reliant on every single cent that comes in. And so for, and, and our industry's margins are really small. People always think we make huge amounts of money with spas and salons and so on, but we actually don't. Our margins are very small. We've got um, a very high staff bill because it's technically um, um, orientated staff that has been studying for years to be able to um, work in our industry and so we have to pay them properly and to be able to pay them properly it means our profit margins are quite low and because of that um, we don't have millions like these big corporations to spend on marketing we don't have big millions to spend on technology technology is our um, I would say our sideline if you want to call it that because um, there's even still some salons that make physical bookings in a book in a diary every day. So I think that 
thing what we've all relied to, relied on in the last few um, weeks and months and, and years since this pandemic is obviously um, free free um, platforms like you know social media social media and um, WhatsApp business and and those type of things because that's all we know. And it's all that um, at this stage we can afford, probably, because survival is the game at the moment. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And you gave a perfect background of the status of small businesses with regards to um, the economy in South Africa. And mm. um, while, while we are on the status of small businesses, I'm just going to bring it to Sophia just before we lost you guys on the transmission, because we are truly live. We are not nice. even pre recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Just before we lost you in the. There you go again. It seems we've lost them again. Um, Okay, let me carry on with my questions. Um, seeing that um, I'm, it looks like I'm actually on there. Um, oh, there we go. Here's a back. Um, Kuda, we lost you there for a while, so we've got no idea. So you're live now again. Okay. Yes, this um, that feed is going to be such a long no stress. <laughs> no stress. <laughs> it's, 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 well, at least uh, welcome awesome. to the modern world. <laughs> That we get to experience the same problems that small businesses experience, maybe in a Absolutely. different way. Yeah. But, <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, please, let's see, please give, give us a, another dive into the status of um, freelancers with, when it comes to digitalization. So as indicated, when it comes to digitalizations, um, it's the, the platforms are there. I would say they are not enough. However, we still have uh, challenges as freelancers in the sense that I've indicated aspects such as affordability and network coverage and also uh, electricity challenges. You find that I have to meet with the, with a client at this particular time to discuss a brief. At that time, my network coverage gets to be poor or electricity cuts off. And that's how it becomes very challenging and tricky or it becomes a, a barrier or a problem when it comes to digital world and platforms. And also the affordability of data, uh, it's also something else in the sense that many small businesses um, or many freelancers cannot afford that too much expensive bundles. You'd find that the cheaper bundles packages are with poor uh, coverages at certain areas. So uh, the digitalization works well in the CBDs and that is where the issue of com competition comes in to say, those who are in the CBDs, freelancers who are located in the central business districts are the ones doing the most when compared to others in the other parts of uh, the country. But, but okay, so we are seeing an infrastructure problem and um, we, we understand that it comes from a government level. And what this digitalization has allowed is when a freelancer has access, to internet, let's just say for two hours they go to an internet cafe, um, like we use, like we like most would do, and they have access to service their client, whether they're based in Germany, Cape Town, Harare, yes. or in, in Accra. Can that start leveling the, the the playing field for freelancers? The fact that they can now start engaging uh, professionally even without the resources of the, that, that, that are supposed to be provided with the natural structures. So well, that becomes uh, one advantage to see, to indicate that digitalization becomes a, a, a tool of communication across countries and it allows globalization to occur. Hence I said, it's uh, something which is very advantageous in the CBDs. For, for example, myself, I had to move from the villages of the Sukukuni district to Polubwan, which is a CBD. Located that site, I have a good coverage and we barely have a load shedding and I have smooth runnings and the competition is, I'm keeping up with the competition as a freelancer through dig digitalization. Congratulations to you uh, <laughs> for, for, for really leveling up the game and, and, and I think this is proof and proof that you can um, 
um, really start uh, progressing and growing your business. Um, so now I'm going to bring it to, to, to you, Adi, in this moment in time. And uh, you, as Chief Marketing Officer of uh, VCTA, have launched a product called Business Energy, which we are aware of, in which businesses have access to a lot. Yeah. Uh, could you take us through that? Yeah, I think, so for us, obviously we've mentioned some of the challenges here today. We've talked about infrastructure and access. We've talked also about industries where the core of the service is within with, with touch. And I thank you, Jacqueline, for, for pointing that out. And I think we felt that there is a need to also create some level of segmentation within this very big environment called small businesses. Yes. So definitely uh, digitalization doesn't look the same for Jacqueline's uh, colleagues where they might be able to communicate digitally, but definitely they're not able to deliver their services digitally. And, and if you can, I'd like to hear how, that would be amazing. <laughs> But, and, and, and it's different for someone who's, uh, you know, in more of a consulting role where they're able to take this to Zoom. So these are two aspects of digitalization, but they are completely different. And then if we bring in the uh, automation of tasks, so yes, I might be offline at the moment, but because my information is in the cloud, I can automate, let's say, reminders for things that are coming up tomorrow then that's you know, a benefit. How do we teach small businesses to use it? How do we break it down to them? So we basically created a platform which is an educational platform, an educational resource on top of the technical platform, the digital platform. And we said, okay, how do we take you into this environment? Let us start with, for example, a self-assessment form where you assess where are you right now within this space? Are you one of those people who are able to just take their business online as is and do their calls on Zoom and that was it? Like, like lawyers could, financial advisors could, a lot of, we obviously could, we're working remotely for a while. <laughs> <laughs> or are you one of those businesses who is not able to operate at all? And then what do you do? How do you, obviously if you're not able to operate, you, your main role is to prepare for the day where you can open. So we've seen it all around the world, hairdressers who on the day that they were able to open had to be super, super efficient in how they were managing because they needed to get a lot of people done. A lot of people needed their services, but then they always had to keep in mind what happens if we close again. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of find a way to communicate with our clients and tell them, this is what you can do, this is what technology enables you, this is what we recommend that we, you do, and we've done that over um, a platform that not only, thankfully, not only us talking to them, but also their peers. So we had small businesses come in and talk about their own uh, experiences. And one thing I want to point out from Looks like we lost the team again. It looks like we've lost them again. Yeah. Um, Foster, are you on? No, he's not there either. There, he's trying yeah, to get I'm on. Here. Yeah, there he is. I'm here. Yeah. Um, so I think Jacqueline, you should you should continue before a big cool while. The, sure, uh, I can. Uh, yeah, it was a great yeah. it's a pleasure. I think. Um, uh, you know, the, the other question that we had regarding small businesses in our small industry is, um, you know, oh, there we go, they're back. They're providing okay. service. They're not, you know, startups or, you know, so people like us who start, try to make a big product and scale it up. If you are a veterinarian, you are needed. If you're in the, in peop, if you're in the well, wellness business, then you are needed. People are not going to stop having their hair cut. So I think that that's definitely the, the, the good side of, of working with small businesses in general is the agility, the creativity, and how you know, fast they can bounce back uh, from these situations. 
and and in that respect it's nothing new it was always there for small businesses that yeah. that need to constantly to constantly yeah. constantly adapt and change and uh, recreate and we've seen it over the time because um we have seen how um ownership in small businesses quickly changes even uh, names even like uh, you find a, a barber shop is there for five years the next 10 uh, 10 years it's a different barber shop so we're gonna i'm gonna touch on the point you you, you put in uh rightly there which says you may be affected by lockdown level three way due to the presidential's speech uh, speech on the uh, just after christmas you cannot serve your clients currently so there are processes that you need to implement to be able to to at least effectively uh, serve your clients besides the digital um besides the digital assistance you have and i'm gonna bring in abego because abego you worked with clients in west africa now abego with clients in west africa please please kindly advise what has been the, the, the what, what what has helped your clients succeed in this time and how have they managed to maintain these processes and also uh, implement them in a digital way thank you very much um kuda um and like you all have rightly said um and these have been very um, challenging times that um, caught us unawares. Uh, mo most businesses uh, had not planned for this. And suddenly we found ourselves in this situation and we had to um, survive the, the situation. Now, the, the good thing is that um, digitalization has uh, given access to um, a, a lot of markets. And a, a typical like, example is what we, we are doing now, an event. Um, holding in uh, um, South Africa, and then we are streaming in Ghana and other parts um, of um, Africa. So um, there has been um, a shift in the mindset. There has been a switch from thinking physical to thinking uh, um, digital, and the kind of access um, digital would, would, would provide. So for example, if you were having a physical event in um, South Africa, it, it would have been difficult. It would have also been more expensive because it would mean that all of the speakers that are out of South Africa would have had to uh, uh, fly in there. So um, that basically pushes a different kind, kind of mind, mindset for all of the businesses. How are we able to ensure that we get access without physical involvement? How are we able to ensure that we constantly um, engage with our clients, our uh, customers, our stakeholders uh, in an efficient way even through this uh, uh, pandemic. Now, another good reason uh, for digitization, which has helped, is that um, it's it's not easy to make a lot of uh, uh, decisions because digital, digitalization gives access to um, data. And um, that data is very, very important for decision making. As, as you know, business is all about decision making, um, what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And once you have um, data, you are able to um, take a very, very, very important decisions based on the data that you have. Um, it, it helps you to understand uh, um, the market, a decision that you would have had to uh, uh, take based on in information that would have been gathered over a, a long period of time. You would be able to take those decisions immediately because you have data available that helps you to take uh, um, the, the decision. So it makes it easier to understand the market uh, um, you, are, you are dealing with. I'll use this summit as another um, example. You can run some real-time analytics on uh, where your viewers um, are, are coming from, which countries they are coming from, and the, the kind of platforms they are using to um, access the, the summit. So those kind of analytics helps you to take the decisions if you have to run another event or another summit later. And then you know, okay, we actually have a lot of viewership from this country. And uh, these are the category of people that, that uh, uh, viewed our summit. So this is what we need to do. Um, digitalization also provides um, insight. That would have been difficult to um, gather. So um, as, as, as you run through the, the data, as you analyze the data, uh, a lot of insight comes out and um, it, it basically uh, shapes up the business. You know which direction to follow. 
um, as a business and what is important to your stakeholders um, uh, out there. So in terms of strengthening uh, 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 brands and then getting them to uh, um, have an efficient uh, business, I think that is the that is the way to go. Um, it is something that should not be embraced as a half measure. It, it, it is something that should be embraced as a full measure because going forward, a lot of things are going to uh, uh, change. Um, as people are saying now, it is possible that we might not go back to the way of working that we know, which means that businesses cannot operate as they used to operate. And um, the only way out is to digitalize their systems and then their processes so that then they can be more um, efficient and they can be able to respond to their current uh, market needs. Um, looks like the team are frozen or are they back? Hello. <laughs> wow, this this is a pure example of how tough it has been for small businesses to digitalize in South Africa. Connectivity um, somehow loses us in between our talks. I beg you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, it looks like your your link froze a while. Okay, thank you so much, Abegu. Um, you did share with us something that was quite important and um, it was how data becomes an important thing and, 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 and when, when you implement the right processes you get to uh, acquire data that can enable your business to run more efficiently and if you acquire this data you're able to use it um, to grow your business and you gave the, an example there of how if you're able to monitor where your viewers come from, you're able to then at least market directly to them. So with that in mind, and we do know, we do know that um, spa and spas mainly operate from a location basis, unless you do travel. <laughs> and and, and I, I recall that you also have a spa yourself, uh, Jacqueline. Yes, I do. Amazing. I do. I actually own That's... two small businesses. Mm. <laughs> so in this sense, this panel is made out of small businesses themselves. Mm. Right. And you did mention earlier on that small businesses find it hard to trust the technology that is exposed to them. Mm. Now, as a spa owner, as, uh, as how... Can, can, can the technology companies be able to make it easier for the small businesses to adopt and in, enable themselves digitally? Um, I think it's, it's obviously, a, um, it's, we, we haven't got a choice. Let's put it that way. As a small business, you actually don't have a choice. Um, you have to become tech savvy. There is no, um, you can't, deny the fact that um, you know our world has forced us to become tech savvy um, even though it's not really our forte I mean listen let's be honest I only learned zoom a year ago I didn't even know it existed before so let's just put that on the table okay um, I think what 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 help what technology can help from a small business if you can integrate it with the system that you have currently, because often their small businesses do have maybe in our industry, in any case, a booking system where you can book clients in and where you can keep track of your clients and keep track of your um, clients' data, like their phone numbers and their emails, et cetera. If you do have a system like that and you want to bring in another um, system that can help, for instance, you know, remind um, or send birthday reminders out and those type of things, it needs to be able to integrate with the system that you have. So um, it needs to be something that works together. I would say that's the one thing. The one thing, the other thing that I think can be really um, great about technology in your business, it brings consistency in your business. Um, you know, where sometimes you personally run out of time, but if the system can automatically um, just post on social media for you because you've programmed it beforehand, um, or they can send out birthday reminders, for instance, 
um, automatically for you. You don't have to think about it every morning because you've got 10 million other things as a small business to worry about. And often what happens in a small business, and I see that what happens with me as well, I tend to wear a lot of hats. You know, um, on the one side, I'm the marketing manager on the other side I'm the salesperson on the other side I um uh, you know I've got to deal with the clients in front I've got to sometimes you know it, there's so many uh, there's so many aspects that you've got to deal with that the last thing that's on your mind is still going on to a system and sending a birthday reminder so I think the consistency is great that it can bring I think there is um uh the the best thing I can suggest when it comes to a platform for our industry is that it's a way of communicating with your clients consistently bringing out the best in you as a as a company what I love about certain platforms and certain technology is is that you can be, become very personal with your client you can show them who you are and your personality because let's be honest when it comes to a small business um, clients buy in because it's you they buy from you and um, they've bought from you for, I've had my one business for 15 years. So for me, you know, clients, it's, it's even hard for me to employ people because the client phones in and says, I want to speak to Jacqueline. I don't want to speak to anybody else because um, so with certain um, technology, you can obviously bring a little bit of yourself to them and they feel like they're dealing with you, even though they might not be dealing with you directly which I think is, is key. Um, but like I said previously when I spoke, um, I think our biggest challenge in our small, in this, uh, small businesses now is to know who to trust. Um, I have been involved with companies before that has charged me a fortune and promised me the world that we were going to have a turnover that tripled and all sorts of things, and it didn't happen. Um, it ended up costing me a lot of money, which I could have spent uh, much better in um, on maybe extra staff or extra stock or something like that. So it's going to have to be cost effective. It's going to have to be someone we can trust. It's going to have to deliver. You know, I, I love techies. Don't take me wrong. I work with website designers and I work with techies and I work with marketing managers and I work with all these things, people on a regular basis. And I love their creativity. But in the end, it still has to deliver. That technology means absolutely nothing to me if it doesn't bring me business. You're right. And you are owed deliverance from that technology. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I've tried it all. Okay. Um, in 15 years in business, I've tried, you know, I've had um, every single type of technology offered to me. And um and currently where I am right now, I am, am doing, I'm not doing anything right now except for my a bit of social media and maybe a newsletter to my clients every now and then. Um, and I just, I, because I took a break from it and just said, whoa, I need to reassess this thing because it's just costing me far too much money and it's not bringing in the business that I, what I, you know, what it, it doesn't justify the cost. Um, so I think that's the challenge. Um, it definitely can work. There's no doubt about it. We can't deny the fact that we need it. But I think it's going to be how it's done and with who it's done and at what cost. Yeah, I think you, may, you mentioned something that I want to highlight and that it's very important and it, it, it pretty much um, brings us to why we are here in any case. Mm. But... Um, Businesses, small businesses have been robbed a lot of money by big tech mm. companies who then see the potential in numbers that, the, mm. that are available mm. in the market and then mm. try try to scale down the, the, their technology so that the small business can consume it and they force that mm. exact technology onto the mm. small business. Now, mm. we partnered, we're, we're helping, partnered helping Africa and Af Africa. Mm. There they go again. We've lost you again, Kuda. Not sure if you can hear me, but we've lost you again. Yes, we 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 have. Um, interesting, and this is a digitalization uh, event. 
<laughs> yeah, isn't it amazing? Hey, that's the other thing is our technology. Our, um, I think that one thing we keep on forgetting to uh, mention is that in Africa as a whole, and I see it a lot because I obviously sit on the board of the whole Africa Spa Association, um, is that technology is um, very unreliable in Africa, unfortunately, and or the or the Wi-Fi, should I say, or the or the signal in Africa is very unreliable often. And it makes it challenging for people to communicate properly. That is, that is, that is very true. Um, and and, and um, that makes working virtually um, a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. Getting cut off whilst you are in, in the middle of a very important conference. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah having to keep apologizing for um dropping off yeah, exactly <laughs> and you and you feel so stupid and it actually has nothing to do with you do you know what i mean it's actually not your fault most of the time um but yeah i i've, I've noticed throughout africa i mean foster i'm sure you can give us some insight on that is how um take how um the signal in south africa or in, in africa as a whole is sometimes a challenge and i think that's what we've got to remember is a lot of these solo small businesses are sitting in rural areas that um bring as much to the economy to as than than the ones that are in the bigger um, places and um and then what happens is there's no signal yes definitely where signal even under fiber disappears yeah. no don't worry we're discussing the whole <laughs> signal thing in africa um, we often see this in the, in our meetings with the African Spa Association and all of these things. We are so reliant on on our service providers um, throughout Africa. And can you imagine you're a small business and you've got a limited budget and you can only pay for a certain service provider thinking that they're going to come through for you and and they don't. And you can't do half of what you'd want to do. It is a challenge for us in Africa. It definitely is. That is a very strong challenge in which we hope our mm. economy gets over mm. with. And um, now bringing back to what the discussion um, we're having, we were about to bring in Adi. And um, you have a tool that enables businesses um, to, to empower themselves in so many different ways when it comes to this digital um, landscape, um, would you be able to give us a deep dive into how best a small business in Africa can use this and where they can use it? Well, again, it, it's, it's, it really depends on, on what profession they are and what they do for a living. As you say, again, where they are technically. But I think there's one thing that we say, you know, every business can benefit from digitalization. It depends on the digitalization of what aspect in the business. Some businesses, again, if we're giving that example of, let's say, a financial consultant or a lawyer, they're able to take the entire uh, business and put it online. As where, for example, um, you know, yoga studios that were able to start training online and actually opened up new horizons for themselves that weren't there previously. And I think Jacqueline also mentions a lot of, of marketing services and a lot of ways of communicating with clients. Well, that's, that's very relevant for some uh, industries and especially industries that couldn't operate during uh, lockdown. It was all about how do we keep the communication going through this time. But I think for me, I would like to highlight a very specific issue. And I think for me, it works across all of the business verticals, which is digital payments. And obviously in, in, in South Africa and in Africa in general, by the way, I, we were just talking about it earlier. I'm very envious of the adoption of digital payments in this country. It, it leapfrogs other countries, which you should be very, very proud of. But I think one of those, <laughs> the, the question is, you know, okay, if we are able to utilize business logic and business you know uh, models to generate more from our existing user base and one thing that i've seen all across the world right now through covid is that customers and i think also jacqueline mentioned loyal customers customers that have been with her for 15 years 
they want to keep the business alive as much as the business wants to stay alive. So we've seen a huge trend in actually selling packages of services or vouchers to be redeemed when you know lockdown is eased. And that is something, you know, it's not just about you know, always looking for new marketing ways to reach new clientele. It actually, I think the statistics is that it costs nine times more to get a new client than it does to engage with an existing client. Yes. What we've seen is that businesses that were able to use, uh, you know, to create business models that rely on their existing clients and tap into the existing client community and talk to them and actually say, you know what, I'm able to now offer you this package of services. You will get, you know, 10 massages for the price of nine, but I would like you to pay for it in advance. And, and again, this is something that is being enabled by the, by the platform. We will help the business count, you know, how many people are eligible, how many, you know, how many massages did you already book? Am I eligible for more? Is my package about to run out? Let us send you an automated reminder to buy a new one. And, 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 and customers respond to that really, really beautifully because, you know, at the end of the day, customers would want if, you know, for me, myself, I go to a personal trainer. Okay, we've lost you again, Kuda. I'm not sure if you can hear us. Um, but yeah, I just to um, yeah, just to chat about what she was speaking about now was that um, you know, I think um when it comes to a small business, those type of things is going to be quite handy to be able to techn to make it technical. Um, and to put it into technology, for instance, selling a group of vouchers like she did and, and having your client pay beforehand. As a small business, um, all I can say is, is over the last year, I focused on my existing clients. Um, I didn't even try and focus on finding new clients. I was there supporting my existing client. And, um, and I think that was the key. Um, and whether I did it via technology or just physically picking the phone up and saying how are you and making it really personal to them um, it was actually key um, because in the end they were the ones that pulled me through the tough time so far because those existing clients are already sold on you they already like you so they already want to spend their money with you they already know what type of service you're going to be giving um, so I think that was quite important um, over this last, you know, the last year since this pandemic has hit us. I don't know about you, Ab. Um, I, I think one of the things um, small businesses should also consider are um, loyalty schemes uh, um, for 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 their their customers and um, and their their clients. I mean, okay. once you have um repeat purchases from um, a particular uh, uh, person uh, there mm -hmm. has to be some form of a loyalty scheme because at the end of the day uh, um when there are issues like like this they are the, they are the ones that can come in uh, uh, for you because they, are, they have been with you they have experienced your your product or their yeah. the service and um they, they know what you can offer um at the, at the end of the day so they are the ones that can help you survive uh, yeah. uh, in, in time so it's, yeah. it's it's important that you properly define um, a loyalty scheme for for these uh, customers, and you make the relationship uh, mutually beneficial. Uh, um, so um, it, it shouldn't be a matter of oh, I'm always benefiting from these um, loyal clients, but what can you also offer back to to yeah. these clients to to ensure that you have that relationship and they can uh, ride with you during the tough times. Mm. Um, I love that idea. I think that's brilliant. But I, I think um, maybe you can just um, answer a question for me regarding this. You know, if we if we are going to be doing a loyalty scheme for a customer, um, can you maybe give us an example of of what would be because I think the precondition idea out there is, is that if you put a loyalty scheme in place, then what will happen is that you're going to be giving away a part of your turnover so to the ones that was going to buy from you in any case so um 
maybe you can just give us an example of you know a loyalty scheme that you would that's going to be beneficial for both but that's not going to um, have a negative impact on the turnover of the the um, business I, I think um, the first thing you need to um, identify is what, what um, the customer perceives as a value in the in the service that you um, offer them because the loyalty scheme needs to be connected to a value uh, proposition. So um, you are not just throwing uh, freebies at them or you are not just, like you say, uh, giving them things out of your uh, revenue projections, mm. just to make them uh, uh, happy. So a, a loyalty scheme should not necessarily affect your your, your bottom line. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it is something that um, your, your customer or your clients can see as uh, an additional value to the to the uh -huh. normal service uh, um, that they offer. So, a typical uh, um, example, maybe you, you say you, you run a spa, right? You have mm. a customer that has been uh, coming to your spa for the past uh, 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 six months, you know, mm. and, and you know they they come to the spa in connection to um, uh, something else that um, they do. Maybe they they are trying to keep healthy. Or, or they have a particular uh, uh, personal project in mind. One of the things you could do is to offer some free advisory uh, uh, um, services that does not really cost uh, you anything to help mm. them um, on, on, on their journey. Um, maybe every two weeks you give them a phone call um, and try and understand how they are going through uh, uh, um, um, their journey, you know, mm. and then um, if you have any links or pointers to help them, you can give them those links and uh, pointers. That is not taking money out of your your spa service, mm. but you are giving them additional value to what you already provide uh, um, to them. So mm. uh, it, it's important that you have that kind of connection with your your, your customers and demonstrate that that you are not only interested in uh, taking money from them, but you are also interested in um, their well being and how they are progressing uh, based on the service that you offer them. Mm. I love that. I. It feels to me like you are adding value. Um, I think Adi wants to say something. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Can you guys? Can we hear you? Oh, thank you. Uh, is there we go. Yeah. Mm. We can hear you. Okay. So I I would just wanted to interject on your conversation here because I think um, I would suggest that you also look at the business from a macro perspective and not just from an individual client perspective because yes an individual client through a loyalty program might pay 10 percent less for a service or but if you're structuring it in a way so for example um get 10 for the price of nine are you guaranteed right now that you will be able to that get that client to come back for 10 massages or treatments within a period of time. That is, you know, one thing that you're getting, you're getting this, you know, reassurance that that mm. money is already in the bank for you. And I think specifically excessive funding is something that is very relevant here. It's the, the ability to show and track mm. and also have, you know, early commitments for what's going to happen in your business mm. in the next month or so and not just make it, you know, something that happens, you know, one treatment at a time or one, um, you know, session at a time. And I think, Kuda, I don't know if you were able to hear it because we were uh, cut off at some point, but mm -hmm. I think Kuda also mentioned the ability to show a record and show like a business volume. So if you're just talking to your clients over the phone and they're giving you cash, how are you going to be able to show to your bank on the day that you need a loan that you have an ongoing returning substantial business that is also has commitments to to the next six months or so and i can mm -hmm. tell you even for us we are a SaaS business when we're working with partners we give them volume discounts because for us it's, it's very important to generate those commitments and have these this this promise for the future over you know the extra 10 percent that we will benefit individually we have investors in the same way that a small business has their bank relationship or their insurance company relationship we need to demonstrate that we have a plan going forward 
And I think one of the big things that loyalty programs give you is the ability to demonstrate, I have this amount of clients, they are returning, they have made, you know, a commitment by buying a package, so they have an urgency to come back. Yeah, I, I think it, it needs to, look, you, you know, you need to look at it. I really would recommend that you look at it from a mm. macro perspective of business. And, and, and yes, at that, we could, from an individual subscriber, maybe make a little bit more, but are we presenting ourselves as a, as a business that drives value to its, its customers, also to the entire ecosystem? Again, the bank, the insurance company, the government, a lot of people need to know that you are there and operating, and that will help. And I think I, um, I'd that like to uh, have an individual perspective. Sorry. Mm. I, no, I, so I just wanted to ask a question. It gives you the assurance. Yeah, it gives you the assurance that there's business coming next time. For example, yeah. uh, in my in yeah. my services, I would say um, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would give a certain percentage discount to say this it's valid from this point until this point. If interested, hmm. you can pay a deposit of ten percent or twenty percent. I know that uh, a client would pay the deposit and i have the time frame so i'll know that between mm. this three months i have at least 10 clients for this kind of set mm. i think that's key though because that's the question i was going to ask um i think we've lost them again but that's the question i was going to ask is okay. there's a you know, you know it, um it, it's, it's oh, there we go they can come back it benefits the most yeah uh, build it as an incentive rather than just Yeah, we've lost them again. There, I would fire their, uh, <laughs> their fiber guys. I would fire them because <laughs> I think you and I have might not have. I don't have fiber where I'm sitting at the moment, but my signal's better than theirs. <laughs> um, what I was gonna. Yeah, what I was gonna say is that I think when it comes to loyalty schemes, you know, we all think a loyalty scheme is like for instance at a, a store where you swipe your card and you get a and you get a kickback the whole time but that affects the turnover of this the the business um but i like that loyalty scheme of you know i think there's a difference between a loyalty scheme and package deals and i think we've got to be very careful not to combine the two because um, uh, you know, package deals we offer regularly in spas and salons. In any case, I mean, in our small businesses, we offer that regularly. It's nothing new, but it's not. It's available to anyone, not necessarily to our loyal customers. Um, and and that's the difference between a loyalty scheme and package deals, because we do that often in our salons already. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I think there's the, the, it's such a fine line between the two um, and that it's going to be important to make sure that it doesn't affect the business negatively um, just by discounting. I, I have a problem with discounting. I don't mind about, I don't mind value adds, but I have a problem with discounting. And, and I, I, I would agree perfectly and, uh, with you, so much because for, yeah, for how long are you going to um, dangle the carrot in front of them? It, it's not yeah. sustainable no you it's know, not sustainable to the business so i, I would yeah. prefer a loyalty scheme that is based on value yes rather than i that agree is, yeah and one yeah. rather than yeah. one that is based on um yeah. dangling carrots in front of your your clients yeah. or your customers yeah. and then hoping that they they, they, they buy it because after no. after it i mean if it's if it's about that then any other any other business or any other competitor can do the same yeah so, I, so I think your, your focus is your focus should be um what additional value can you add to the yeah. current service you you provide to your customers yeah. or your clients uh, yeah. um, that would be perceived as um a value package you know yeah. and that would that would drive their their loyalty rather than trying yeah. to give out uh, freebies um every yeah. every single time because those freebies after a while they'll start hurting you yeah yeah they will. They will start hurting because they cost money. Mm. Thank you so much. And and, uh, and I think uh, if I can wrap up the customer loyalty part, um, I think the key points to catch uh, as a viewer is that customer loyalty does not mean you're giving away money. If you get pre, if you get commitment in advance, 
other than not knowing you may not be you getting commitment you are gaining even if it's a 10 percent off if you get that commitment paid already in advance you are building your credit record so you can then access finance and then if you have a track record of all these commitments invoicing billing um, uh, estimates which we call quotations in africa by the way mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are at an advantage to actually show your book records, your bookkeeping, other than compared to a platform that does not, does not do any of that. And then coupled with a bit of marketing right there, a bit of, um, a bit of email and SMS marketing, coupled with a bit of um, your client database, and coupled with also uh, your ability to just build a website for yourself. And we know that websites, a big problem for professional services. Let's not even talk about retail. Professional services don't have websites because they don't have platforms that offer them a free place to build a website. website. That's, that's very true. I'm also struggling with my employer website. <laughs> I don't want to lie. I'm struggling with my website. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's truth from a small business right now. So I, w- I want us to wrap up. And um, in this wrapping, we're going to hear from um, Angelo very soon. Angelo is a very great business coach and uh, a well-experienced um, business leader in any case who runs, the, who runs the Institute of Management Consultants and Master Coaches. So we, we're going to hear from him. But to wrap up, I just want to uh, hear from everybody. I think Adi, you go last year. But then <laughs> let's start with, 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 with Lesiba right here. Random question. From the cloud, how does a freelancer get to to live up to the same level as you are, using the advantages that are now available? I think it's to uh, make use of the the digital platforms that you have uh, that are accessible to you in as much as possible because that helps you to build your brand, build your name, uh, familiarize clients with your services and make sure that you deliver to the services because that way you're building trust and clients are going to to come to you. That way, when simply doing that, you're building your brand and also selling yourself to the people, So, which is something which is very That's true. And I'm going to take it to Jacqueline before I come to you yeah. and I beg you. <laughs> Jacqueline, <laughs> how can technology companies really break the trust barrier with you so take for example us helping africa Hmm. where would trust that's a good question um i think um you know maybe if your tech company comes and says i've just had one done that to me and i think it worked really well um and turned to me and said okay we'll give you 30 days um and we will show you what we can do for 30 days in your business and 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 give me and show me the return it could be, you know, um, because you know we would. It is about the return. If I don't have a lot of money um, and my margins are small, I'm going to want to know that I'm going to get a return. So they came to me and said, "Give me, um, give me 30 days, and I will show you um, what we can do for 30 days in your business." And um, and then we see what happens and if you like it then we carry on and if we don't like it we don't carry on um i think the other thing that tech businesses can do is maybe um start small with a small business don't come in and expect them to dump sixty thousand rand on your on your um on your desk and say help me they don't have that so start small have you know small little bite-sized things maybe have a plan in long term but have small little bite size that they can afford. Um, and that will at least bring some return immediately, which makes it a lot easier for them to financially swallow right now, especially at the moment where we are all just surviving and trying to get salaries and, and trying to get food on the table. That would be my advice to tech companies. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And then Abegu, um, from from us, uh, a, a, a West African point of view, 
where do you see West, uh, where, 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 please give, sorry, and please give South Africa a few tips of how you, the West Africa has managed to digitalize in the, and, 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 and how they can take advantage of it. Okay, thank you very much, um, Kuda. Um, fortunately for, for West Africa, um, the process started um, a bit um, earlier. Um, a lot of the technology-based uh, companies have had already started a process of um, trying to provide access to um, individuals and businesses um, in, in terms of um, uh, internet um, um, connectivity. So um, currently speaking, um, I, I'm using a fiber um, network and um, the, the telecom companies are busily connecting fiber um, all of the all over the place to ensure that people have reliable uh, um, access to be able to run their their, their businesses, which, which is why I probably have not dropped uh, even once during the uh, um, during this uh, discussion. And and I think it is it is important that all right, uh, that's on me. <laughs> that's on me. <laughs> yeah. And it, and I think it is important uh, <laughs> that uh, infrastructure um, is developed because that that is the only way you are going to be able to um, enable the digital uh, process. Is when people have um, access, not necessarily in the big offices, but access in their homes, um, access at uh, co-working spaces, um, access at uh, remote areas, so that everybody can be able to digitize their business and, and, and then, then run their business efficiently, even if they are running their business from home. And, and that is something that we are um, taking seriously in uh, West Africa. And, and I think that the government has also been um, involved uh, in ensuring that um, that access is provided. I think that is the that is the way forward. If if I'm, I'm going to give one advice to South Africa, it is something that they should take uh, uh, um, seriously, especially when uh, South Africa is seen as um, one of the uh, forerunners or one of the leaders uh, um, when when it comes to um, Africa. Um, mm. Making sure that there, there is that digital access for everybody it, 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 it's a total must. It is something that the the, the, organize, the big organizations and the government must uh, pick up. And then there has to be a clear roadmap on what they are trying to achieve. And that, that roadmap needs to be communicated for everybody to understand and for there to be um, a buy-in. Because that, that approach also uh, gives that nationalistic mindset where we know, you know, as a nation, we are all working towards uh, one goal. So um, if I would give an advice, that is what I would say. And, and it has to be done quickly uh, uh, because we are never going to go to the normal way of working. So it has to be done almost immediately. Yeah. I love that. I have one question. Um, I think the issue about South Africa is digitization is more, has happened at the enterprise level and, and the retail and the small businesses are not really, um, they don't really understand or don't know how to go digital. The question is, um, they have a, a huge council for ICT that is drawing up all these processes just to make sure retail businesses as well as small businesses go digital. And so how do the small businesses capitalize on these um, roadmap, um, maybe with implementation? Um, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Foster. Um, I, I think you need to go to the the beginning of it. And when these plans are being made, and then you are you are, you are thinking about how, uh, implementing the infrastructure, I think the small businesses should be uh, um, involved because there's the danger that um, what you are thinking about as a solution for the small businesses might not actually be what they need. Might not actually be what they need. So. Um, you are setting up um, a central uh, infrastructure, pumping a lot of uh, millions of dollars into that infrastructure. When that small business actually just wants some connectivity so that they can run their social media campaigns and sell their products online, you know. And so how do you ensure that um, what, do you, what you are providing is actually what they need? They have to be involved in the process. You know, there has to be 
um, constant interaction with the small businesses to ensure that you understand exactly what they are going through and what their needs are. You understand um, their, their vision in the, in the short and long term and then what, um, as a government, you can do to support uh, um, um, that. I mean, yes, the, the big infrastructure is, in, is important, but at the end of the day, we all know it is just the mega corporations that take advantage of the big infrastructure, just because the, uh, the, the smaller entities will not be able to afford it. So how do you ensure that uh, that infrastructure is affordable to the, the, the smaller organizations and the, and the startups and the individuals and then they get the same uh, um, level of access and usage as the as the big corporation, which is why it's important that it is not just a high level discussion, but a discussion needs to go down to to that level and for them to understand um, what is being done and how they can be a part of it and how they can benefit from it. Thank you so much. You highlighted something I really love right there, and uh, it is inclusion. And, and that's why we are on Africa Digital Festival, that think tank for technology in Africa. And that's why we're having this discussion, so that we can really hone in to those problems that are foresight, uh, that are not foreseen by uh, any technology company when they go into a region to, to enter a market, or the actual government when they are planning their own um, the owner's implementation strategy when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution. And with that in mind, I'm going to bring in Adi Angel, and we already know she runs a very big and uh, fast growing tech company that is here to solve your problems too as a small business. And um, thank you for, for, having, uh, for, for visiting us in South Africa. And uh, yes, my question for you, Adi is how do you foresee the South African small business landscape um, from your eyes, given this discussion? Mm. Well, for me, the, the South African ecosystem is, is really full of potential. I think we spoke about it earlier today, because yes, um, there are infrastructure problems, but infrastructure problems are relatively easy to be solved. That is a situation that is in a way known and there are planned investments into it. Um, what is special here is the mindset. Yes. And I think, and you know, we also have been discussing it together earlier before we started. It's, there's a mindset of entrepreneurship. There's a mindset, a mindset of taking on uh, new challenges and understanding that the responsibility of you know bettering ourselves and bettering our economy is is on us and I think that's unique to um, a lot of actually a lot of countries in Africa but that's not necessarily the case in already uh, quite successful economies elsewhere and I think you know if there's one thing that is that is very clear to me here and you know this discussion is evidence to it is that, that there are a lot of people in And reimburses people who it's really a discussion about how to build a future mm -hmm. and 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 that is what's special here that is why i am here and that is why i love to be here Amazing. so yeah a really congratulations to to any of you who's been working in this space because it's 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 amazing and it's so much bigger than you know the potential is so much bigger mm. than the past in that respect it's, it's super exciting amazing so ladies and gentlemen we are on africa digital first of all and you did drop in your questions we saw them we read over 120 questions still reading that is really <laughs> truthful <laughs> 120 questions and we were trying to make sure that we come up with with answers for each and every question. So each and every person is going to get their, their, their answers um, as they registered. Now, we're gonna do it uniquely. We figured it out. That's why we stopped at 120. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> we figured it out. We're gonna now go into our communities. We have the freelancers. We have um, consultants, master coaches, and we have the spa and wellness 
we're going to go into each community of, 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 of these um, uh, the verticals and actually hone in to that specific problem and discuss these questions with the community leaders, with you on, 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 on our live panels too. And um, to close this off, watch the space. You will be invited soon. Now, <laughs> we have, to close this off, this, uh, this auspicious event, auspicious, my, my language. <laughs> auspicious. <laughs> this auspicious event, we have Angelo Kihas, and he's going to join us in about two minutes time. But let's take a short, quick break. You need to use the loo, and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> What is Africa? Is it the wildlife, the beautiful coasts, the thriving cities? It is more than that. It is the people. Our 55 countries have many things in common. Our cultures bind us together. They give us strength and identity. They make us proud. By sharing our knowledge and working together, we are building a new Africa that's driven by investments, by game-changing infrastructure projects, and using transformative technology to change the way we live, work, and conduct business. Using our largest natural resource, our vast arable land, we are making advances in agriculture, developing new industries, creating jobs, and improving livelihoods. Together, we are moving forward on economic integration. By consolidating Africa's significant internal market to foster trade within the continent and with the world, Africa is open for business. We are building the Africa we want. So, what is the continent of the future? The answer is Africa chair for the digital foundation africa chair for the digital foundation africa we have been on this journey trying to help drive digital transformation in africa and for the last couple of years we've been designing initiatives around helping drive innovation encouraging young people who aspire to develop initiatives to help solve problems in africa using technology the Africa Digital Festival is a series of activities and initiatives we have designed to help solve the people transformation piece of this entire journey we are on. This includes designing hackathons, esports competition, uh, women entrepreneurship initiatives, rewarding innovative and inno innovative startups and entrepreneurs who are doing amazing things to solve problems in our continent. And for this matter, I'd like to tell you more about the Africa Digital Festival and the Africa Digital Awards we are trying This is not business as usual. No regular day of the week. There'll be no fighting the snooze button and getting ready for work. This will be something else. A country closed for travel and so closed for business. But just you wait until we can travel again. Boy, are we going to travel. Long breaks and short getaways to be in
All right, let's do that now. Are you going to introduce me? Or do you just want me to go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Must I introduce myself? Okay, hello everybody. I'm uh, Angelo Cajares. Uh, my job is uh, coaching and consulting. I'm also a serial entrepreneur, so I do understand what a lot of you have been going through. Um, I'm also not prepared for this session because I wanted to hear what was being said and look at potential ways of solving the problems that, uh, that were raised. And I really believe one of the things we need to do is go back to basics. Um, we, we tend to be speaking about technology as if it's the panacea and it's going to solve every problem on earth at right. Uh, there are certain businesses that technology may just briefly touch and make certain aspects of it slightly easier. But uh, as we saw with the, uh, let's call it the professional beauty industry, it's not a lot you can do uh, to change somebody putting their hands on you or uh, doing eye makeup or whatever. So I'm, I'm going to be fairly generic. I, I'd like to ask that we bring up the first slide, which is uh, a model that I use to coach businesses so that we can see uh, each aspect of the business and understand what the business is all about. So this is called the BOCOS framework. And the first part, the B, is the one I always start on. And I say to people, well, what is your business model? Now, if you don't mind, just flipping forward one slide, and then we'll come back to this one. Just, uh, it'll be a triangle. Right, so, so this, uh, this is one of the most basic business models around, and it asks some very, very basic questions. It says, uh, who is my client? What am I servicing them with? What do they need? What is the value chain I use to get to them? How do I actually make money out of it? Will I make money out of it? Very, very basic questions and actually not that easy to answer. So if we can go back to the previous slide, that is what the B is all about. So you, in, in every business, you need to have a business model, which is uh, what do I do and how do I make money out of it? The second part is also the marketing model. How do I get people to know about me? Uh, in today's business, we are competing with a lot of people who don't have any work. So they're desperately trying to get attention and they're doing everything they can to get in front of you. So uh, the marketing model and the way you market is very important, but don't overspend. Uh, we've heard horror stories of people wanting to put a uh, million dollars on the table to get a marketing plan out there and they can only make 50,000 Rand out of it. So that's not, an, uh, that's not a solution. So you've got to have uh, what they call in tailoring, you've got to cut your suit uh, according to the cloth that you have. So if we move on to the next area, which we didn't say very much about, but in one-person businesses, that is the organization, uh, you can't replace yourself. Everybody's looking for you to do the job. But what you should consider in today's world in using technology is outsourcing, co-sourcing, collaborating, uh, helping people uh, work together, uh, getting people to perform certain tasks for you online, so that you don't have to leave your office and get them done as efficiently as possible. The next area which a lot of people were speaking about is the customer acquisition, which means how do I get my customers to either walk in the door or buy, depending on whether I'm online or not online. And remember, depending on the kind of business you're in, you, some of you can't sell your goods online. You can't sell a, a, a makeup job online. You can sell makeup online, yes. But uh, if we come back to the business model, in those businesses that can't really be automated to such an extent, then maybe you should be looking at diversifying your business model, getting out of your current business model at the moment, or starting an alternative business. So one of the things we did recently was we worked with 22 businesses in South Africa, uh, all of which were small to medium, and some of them micro, and we increased their turnover by millions. Uh, under COVID situation. So, so you can imagine if we, we didn't have COVID restrictions, it could have been tremendously a, a lot more than, than what we did achieve. But they survived. And some of the tactics were stop doing what doesn't work. Look for new ways of doing things. Look for new aspects to your business. Look at your skills and say, what else can I do with my skills? Those are questions that you need to ask. 
Then we look at the next O, which is the second O of Volkov's model, and that is uh, operations and metrics. We spoke about running financial systems, and yes, that's important. And you can do that online, yes, you can. Uh, but what is more important is, what are the key measures that you're using to ensure that your business is staying afloat, succeeding and growing? And that's the simplest part. I could take a whole day describing this model. But um, when we talk about operations and metrics, we're talking about what is it that you need to do, measure, and then eventually, if you can, automate. Uh, because the, if your processes are repetitive, you can automate them. If they're not repetitive, forget about automation. You cannot automate uh, processes that keep very extremely difficult. You can have automation tools that assist you. That's different. Um, the, so the operations of metrics, if the business is repetitive and you can reach many people simultaneously, then you can use technology tools and you can build digital business models. The S of the model is where I should have started, but because it doesn't sound so good, we, we put S at the end. But we've touched on S. S is about self. Self is about mindset. It's about self-perception self-motivation, self-drive, and believing that you can succeed in the most difficult situations. Now, I know that's not easy. So how do we do it when we have uh, an operation like this, a, uh, a, a live show, a collaborative structure, um, groups of people who say we want to help each other? That is when you actually start helping each other. So I've been through this before. I can help you. Uh, come and talk to me if you need to talk to somebody. Uh, come and work with me if, if uh, one of us can't do it, let's two of us try and do it together, or a group of us. Because we're competing with corporate businesses that have a lot more resources than we have. And that comes back to finance. Uh, in South Africa, specifically, um, we have a very, very uh, strange financial system. Uh, they want your life, your mother, your brother, and everybody else, your house, your car, as collateral. And uh, then they'll give you something. But if you don't have a mother, brother, house, collateral, you get no money. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about doing it? And, and where do they look? They, they really don't follow American and other systems which are more venture capital orientated. So we need to start as Africa to start funding mechanisms for small businesses, which are outside the corporate realm of control, where we can actually fund small businesses. I'm not doing this to pat myself on the back, and I won't tell you who it is. I took an absolute chance and funded a, a lady who runs a, she's actually paraplegic, and she needed money, and she couldn't get it anywhere, and I said, I'm going to finance you. And uh, things are looking great for her, and she's so excited. Her first product's rolling off right as we speak. Um, I know a friend in London who's a Nigerian who is giving money out to people, not just handing it out, he's actually vetting them first and saying, you will get so much money, and this is how long it will take you to pay it back. And he says, in most cases, the people are saying, I don't need as much as you want to give me. And in many cases, they're paying the money back faster than, than they agreed. So, so that is something to think about. And that means that we can help each other, we can help ourselves, as opposed to wait for big brother, big corporates, and so on to help us. Um, I haven't even spoke about the other side, which is the automation tools, social media, etc., because I think we've touched on that quite a bit. But I just want to look at a few of my notes I was making. Um, the, the one thing you can look at in your model, uh, which has to change, is your supply chain. Where are you buying your raw materials? If you were buying plastic in the past, it's very difficult to get all the plastic right now. If you're looking to buy electronic goods, um, there was a delay because uh, there was embargoes on, on the shipping. Um, have you thought about producing new products from what you have? Have you thought about collaborating with other people to produce new products? Have you thought about buying local? Uh, are you encouraging buying local? Are you encouraging local supply chains? Uh, let's see what else I said here. The other thing, of course, entrepreneurs and opportunists. Look for opportunities. Uh, the people we spoke to, the 22 businesses we spoke to, um, in many cases we told them to drop one business, not confuse their businesses because they were calling company ABC, where A, B, and C were all three different products. And they were trying to market it as one. You've actually got to have a very clear marketing message. Otherwise, people don't know what they're buying. So we've spoken about local. We've spoken about self. Um, we've spoken about cash flow. Cash flow. We've spoken about finance. Um, you've got to watch your money. Anything else. Don't get into debt. 
don't borrow for the sake of it. Borrow money for a business purpose. Don't borrow money for that BMW that you've been eyeing for a while. And when you get paid, don't go and buy that BMW. I'm not picking up BMW, it could be a Mercedes. Um, <laughs> so that's not the issue. The best place to invest your money is in your business. And of course, you've got to ask yourself, who's the best funder? You. Who's the best funder of your business? Your profits. And if you're not making profits, yeah, you've got to relook really at your business. I'm not saying that the models and the, uh, the advice we're giving and everything else will work for every business. It worked. And that's why we coach people to say, this is what your business looks like, this is what you need, and this is how you go about growing your business. And in some cases, this is how you go about closing your business down so that you don't lose any more money. I think that's uh, a lot of what I heard and a bit more about what I spoke about. Also, um, reskilling, education, teach yourself new things. I'm in the consulting and coaching business. You know which consultants and coaches are struggling? The ones that are not computer literate because they cannot coach on Zoom or um, Blue Jeans or whatever tool uh, is available. Teams, they, they sit there and they struggle and they, they press one finger at a time and they crash it. Never mind fiber. Uh, my fiber never gives me problems in my office and it's just plain old 20 megabit per second line. <laughs> okay, what you should be looking at is electricity backup. Uh, and our friends in the government are looking to levy uh, solar panels now which is going to help us quite a lot uh, in the wrong way. Um, so yes, your businesses are being disruptive. Be creative. Uh, be daring. Don't be too daring with your money because it's scarce. Work together. Find new ways of doing things. Find new supply chains. Buy local. And be agile. That's it. I could carry on for a few hours, but those are the nuggets. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angelo. And I'm gonna join you right here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angelo. And um, I think we've come to a wrap. And small businesses have had their piece. The ones who are alive today have had a bit of drama too, from the one above, an experience of what they experience in their own businesses too. And I think to depart. Thank you so much for joining the Africa Digital Festival Small Business Summit. It has been a discussion of how we can progress together. Internationals have been involved, locals have been involved, grassroots, uh, the authoritative, the technology partners, and we have all come to a consensus that digitization is the future. So as we move forward, Africa Digital Festival is going to announce soon in, in your feed the, the theme of this year's um, Africa, just, uh, roadshow that will be happening in South Africa, Johannesburg on the 29th of April. And then after, you'll be seeing some communication from the partners around about how we can assist you further in digitizing. And in conclusion, believe you can. <laughs>
It is the people. Our 55 countries have many things in common. Our cultures bind us together. They give us strength and identity. They make us proud. By sharing our knowledge and working together, we are building a new Africa that's driven by investments, by game-changing infrastructure projects, and using transformative technology to change the way we live, work, and conduct business. Using our largest natural resource, our vast arable land, we are making advances in agriculture, developing new industries, creating jobs, and improving livelihoods. Together, we are moving forward on economic integration. By consolidating Africa's significant internal market to foster trade within the continent and with the world, Africa is open for business. We are building the Africa we want. So, what is the continent of the future? <laughs>